Hi, I'm Gary White. Uh, welcome to my studio. I'm an oil painter. I've been painting for about 30 years. During that time I've had people ask me questions, uh, sometimes about painting technique, sometimes about uh, just my setup. I'm doing a video today just on the uh, my studio setup. Uh, for starters, this is my easel. This is my main easel. Uh, it's medium size. Uh, this is the one I do most of my paintings on from small maybe up to 36 inch. If I'm doing a bigger painting like this 5 foot canvas, I have a homemade easel that I do uh, just the big paintings on. I also have a French easel uh, for out in the field and I have another easel that goes into a backpack if I'm needing to hike to a location. Uh, on my easel I've added this uh, palette that I made myself. It's got a plywood bottom and extends under this compartment here about three inches. It's got two carriage bolts holding it in place. It's pretty sturdy. Can't lean on it, but it's sturdy enough. Um, my palette's got glass surface. Underneath the glass is a uh, piece of gray paper. Uh, you want a neutral color for mixing your colors. For cleanup, I use a razor blade scraper. Uh, I have a compartment, you know, wood strips that create compartments. On this side I've got my thinner can, a couple palette knives, the scraper. On this side I've got the paint tubes I would use on a particular paint. This little divider I put there because I was knocking some things into the trash. Didn't want to be throwing things away. Um, my oil, uh, my thinner can is one that I make. Uh, it's just out of some tin cans. You can see inside it's got a tin can just like this, cut in half. Took a nail, punched holes in it, dropped it in. Punched a couple holes here, put a stout wire across there, crimped it over. And it makes for a good thinner can. The reason I did this, I have one of the stainless steel types with the lid and I use that out in the field. But eventually you got to clean it up because they get pretty grungy inside. When these get dirty, I just throw them away and make another one. Um, when I uh, need to clean up my brushes, I've got this stuff. I've used this brand quite a bit. It's called uh, BJ's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. And it says we'll clean hard oil paint brushes. And it, it does. It works pretty good. I'm sure there's some other brands out there that work just as well, but this is just what I've used. Um, <coughs> excuse me. On my paints, I buy uh, artist grade paints. Uh, they have the studio or student grade paints you can get. The, uh, they're not the same. I think the color intensity on the student grade is not the same as the artist grade. The pigments aren't always the same. Um, I just prefer these. If you're starting out, maybe you go with the student grade uh, and maybe with the smaller tubes. But this is what I like to use because I go through a lot of paint. This particular tube is by Utrecht. I have Windsor Newton, Lucas, I've used Grumbacher, I've used a lot of different brands, uh, and I've not really had problems with any of them. Uh, when the tube is getting down to close to being empty, I have this thing here, it's called a tube bringer. It's got a couple rollers and this crank. I've already done this tube. You stick it between the rollers, crank it down, it pushes all the paint up to the near the spout where you can use the last drop. This thing works really good. I've had it a long time. I guess you can still get them. Um, as far as brushes, I use all kinds of brushes including on my water, uh, my uh, oil paints I use watercolor brushes. Um, they work really well. Uh, I don't imagine they would be any good for watercolor after this, but I don't do watercolor. Uh, but I use oil paint brushes all types. Um, for my thinner, I use just the artist grade odorless thinner. This happens to be Speedball brand. I've used other brands. They've all worked really well. The only thing you don't want to use is the kind that claims to be odorless that you can get at the lumber yard. It's still got a pretty strong odor and it gives me a headache. Um, I don't throw away any of my thinner. When I need to uh, change out my thinner, I dump it into a container and if you let it sit for a few days or a week, the solids settle to the bottom and uh, they'll solidify and you can dump the thinner back in and reuse it. It does get a little yellowish color like this and I think it's the uh, 
the oil and the paint stay suspended, but it's really not a problem because you're constantly adding fresh thinner anyway. Um, for my painting medium, I just use refined linseed oil and a 50-50 mix with the uh, mineral spirits. There's a lot of uh, painting medium formulas out there on the internet you can look up, uh, but this is just what works good for me. Um, my lighting, I have uh, the shaded fixture so I can adjust it to shine on the painting and my palette and keep the light out of my eyes. And it's a daylight bulb. I do have some north facing windows, uh, but I use the bulb all the time. I like having my palette in front of my painting because then the light is used on the palette and the painting. And it's a limited motion from you know mixing to painting. Um, also, when I'm out in the field with my French easel, my palette sits on the drawer, so it's the same configuration. Uh, and I always put my paints in the same position. Um, let's see, I have a mall stick. Made this, it's just a square stick. I put a uh, L-shaped screw in it, and that way you can hook it over the top of the painting. I have several different lengths. If I was doing this painting, I'd probably use a longer one. Although I don't use them very much, I mostly use it just laying it like that and resting my hand to sign my paint. And also with the hook, makes it a handy thing to hang it on. Uh, for my trash bags, I got this idea. When you go to the grocery store and they're bagging your groceries, they have the thing that they hang the bag in. And uh, so I made this one out of just some wood pieces, cut a slot in the end, put a screw here, stick the bag in the slot, hook it over the screw, and you're good to go. My paper towels, this is an aluminum bar, bent it in an L shape, screwed it to the bottom of the table, and it holds the uh, paper towels just fine. Um, when my painting is totally dry, I use DeMar varnish. I bought uh, DeMar crystals. There's instructions on the package. You dissolve them in uh, turpentine, and it, it goes a long ways. I put the DeMar finish on my painting as thin as possible, as long as I have total coverage. Uh, the varnish helps bring out the color, protects the painting, and it's also removable if it needed to be. Um, I have this thing, if I'm painting from photographs, this is where I hang them. This is just a piece of electrical house wire, I believe it's called Romex. I can clip the photograph to this um, and it's hooked into a bracket I have. You could use a C-clamp or something like that. You can also buy a cord similar to this at the lumber yard and you can bend it and it keeps its shape. Um, but this works pretty good. Uh, let's see. I have a, uh, this thing I made, it's a drying rack when I paint with canvas panels and I, I paint relatively fast. So if I have several of them and I need to uh, dry them, I can set them in there like that and uh, let them dry. Plus you can look at them and kind of stick them out of the way. Um, on my easel, when I'm painting a stretched canvas, I have these metal clips, you can get them at the lumber yard. They have holes already in them. I put a small screw into the wood stretcher bar. And that way, if you're doing a gallery wrap, you can paint the edge uh, while the painting's still wet. You can also attach one to the bottom, and then you can flip it over and hook it up that way. Um, you can use it if you're not going to paint the edge. If I'm doing just a canvas panel, I use the little wood wedges that come with the stretcher bars. They're about two inches long. I'll set the edge of that on the panel and then use the same clip. Um, that's about it. Uh, it's pretty much my studio setup. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me. You can go to my website, garywhiteart.com. Thank you.